round number eight. Fight scheduled for ten rounds, and I think in Sandalon Williams' corner, we were eavesdropping in the corner while we were away at commercial. And they're kind of telling him the same thing you and I observed, Alan. That is, obviously, they have a fighter who is maybe not in 100 percent peak physical shape, and they're kind of telling him, "Hey, you're doing all right. You're doing all right. Keep it going. Do a little bit more. Don't wait for the decision to be made. Go out there and do something. Make the decision yourself." Well, I think mostly it was a pep talk, trying to pump him up, as you indicated. Your card, it is, uh, I'd say, close. Fairly close, yes. Can't be closer. 67-67. You know, I, again, quite unofficial. I'm not saying that facetiously. I'm, I'm reminding people that it is unofficial, but judges could have a whole different slant on it. Really, there's one round in this, in this fight I know, and that's the sixth, where Williams won that. Hey, even the second round where he hurt him was not that clear. No. Could have, well, could have gone for Ben. There's Williams keeping that jab steadily in Nigel Ben's face. Oh, that, now that's a strong jab by Williams. Some of those are softer jabs. That one was a strong one. Those are marginal. You, know, you might count those, you might not. But Ben, as he was earlier in the fight, now fighting more flat-footed and, and almost off his back foot. Mm -hmm. He's missing a lot. Ben, is, his accuracy is really not what he would want in this fight. I mean, you look at this portion of this round, it's real tough to see that many punches Ben is landing over there. There's a good uppercut. is the quintessential Sanderline Williams fight. But you know, it could end up being the exact prototype of his fights in that he could end up with another close decision yeah. loss. And that doesn't do him any good. No, that's right. No, he, 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 moral victories are not going to help him at the age of 31. And if Nigel Ben escapes here even with a decision win, he goes on to knock somebody else out, and he'll still get a title shot, and nobody will remember, right. just like they did with Iran Barkley and with Frank Payne. Nobody remembered too much that they had a close decision win over Sanderline Williams. Yeah, it really is right at the moment headed in exactly that direction. Close with Harold Graham, close with Frank Tate, close with Iran Barkley. See, I like Williams in this eighth round, but I don't know if everybody does. I still think he's landing more, more effective punches here. I have to think that this eighth round would be a hard round for him to earn on the judges' cards, unless he finishes the last ten seconds well. Even though you easily could make a case as you have for him winning it. Maybe that might have helped him. We'll be back. Jab, jab. Two rounds left, Sandy. Two rounds. Looking in a corner of Santa Line Williams. And there's some concern in a corner just a moment ago. They're trying to make the point of get your man out of there because if you sit back and wait to win a decision, it might not happen. He's tired, man. Don't let him rest. Keep on. Step in with that jab. Step in with that. Big up the two. Uh, yeah, they said the as we take a look in the last round. Ben missing and Williams with the hook pushing him back. Nothing too big damaging there, but he did push him back. They said to him, don't leave it in the hands of the judges. Santa Line Williams is going to have to dig down and find something here over the last couple of rounds. A close fight. It's a fight that he can win. But I think his corner's advice is pretty sage. He has to go out and get it. And see, he is blocking all those jabs by Nigel Ben. Maybe one got in. Well, you can see we've got Williams edging ahead. And of course, that would indicate just how close this bout is. It's the punch profile that you see. Jab, 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 keep it moving, Again, Williams catching most of Ben's punches on the gloves. Now there was Nigel Ben timing the jab and throwing it right over it, which I alluded to a couple of rounds ago. Nigel Ben rated in the top ten by everybody. Number one IBF, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Good combination by Sandra Lyon Williams. 
checked at number eight, IBF. Number nine, WBC. Number six, WBA. So he's right in the thick of it in the hunt. And uh, it goes without saying, it goes without saying that a loss here would uh, set him back severely. <laughs> but even though it went without saying, I said it anyway. <laughs> so I guess it didn't. There's Williams with the hook. I really think that he's missing a bet with that hook because that is, after all, the punch he's hurt him with a couple of times. A little bit of blood from the nose of Sanderline Williams. You know, they may say after this spot, I could just almost hear it. Well, Williams is tough for us in Ben's corner. Williams was more of a survivor. It was tough to fight. But Jim, look, he's standing right there. He's not exactly... Williams isn't like dancing around the ring. Oh, yeah, I would not put this... I wouldn't characterize this fight as saying Williams fought it like a survivor. Yeah. I mean, he's good right hand by Ben there. You know what's interesting? I don't think Nigel Ben's power is awe-inspiring to Sanderline Williams. No, I don't either. And in fact, but he said, when you sit here and listen to his punches, it sounds like a heavy-handed puncher. But and he has been knocking people out. Knocked out Tim Williams, who we saw recently. We saw Williams take uh, Matthew Hilton all the way before he knocked out in the tenth round. No better round for Nigel Ben, though. Much better round. And it all could come down to the tenth round. End of nine. Follow you into the corner of Sanderline Williams. Three minutes of boxing left. 